OK, last year, uh, October was Black History Month here in the UK. And in America, February, it's Black History Month there here in 2021. Uh, and now I'm going to be talking to someone who's been in the news recently for quite a few reasons uh, that we're going to come on to now. Kamayu Johnson calling in from San Diego. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having me. Oh, hey, look, the pleasure is all mine, Kamayu. You've got an amazing story uh, to tell us. Uh, firstly, you're in San Diego you were meant to play the farmer's insurance last week. Tell us a bit about what's happened in the last week, 10 days. Oh, man, it's just been a roller coaster, man. It's been a roller coaster of roller coaster ride for sure. But um, just being able to, you know, just be healthy and uh, just be here. My, my mom's finally doing good and just all that is just a blessing. But, you know, I got here on Sunday and, um, Got here Saturday, actually got tested on Sunday and then got my test results back about 1130 on Sunday. And um, they came back positive. Got a call as I was literally walking out of my hotel room to go practice a little bit. And then tested again on uh, on Monday and Tuesday and tested positive again. And I was forced to withdraw. So um, kind of devastating then. But, you know, I have a great team and, and, and a lot of good people around me that's helping me and, and you know, just kind of stole me to uh, stay patient and it'll get better for sure. Mm, uh, for, for everyone who might not know Kamai, he, he's one of the top players on the uh, Advocates Pro Golf Association Tour, which is for minority and black players in America. And he got an invite into the Farmers Insurance, Farmers uh, Support uh, Kamayu and he got tested positive for COVID and had to withdraw, had to isolate. Uh, so it was very frustrating, but there's positive news, which we'll come on to a bit later because you're in a, a, another couple of events, which we'll, we'll talk about. Firstly, Kamayu, let's talk right. a little bit about your backstory. You grew up in, um, in Madison in Florida. Tell us a bit about your upbringing there. Yeah, I grew up in Madison, Florida, small town, um, in Florida, and it's literally the poorest is actually just saw on the news that it's the poorest uh, city in Florida. Um, so grew up there, um, played a lot of baseball growing up. Um, we used to play a lot of sports, everybody in my family, my cousins and my brother. Um, we stayed in sports and that's the only thing that kind of, you know, helped us at that, at that younger age because it was literally nothing else to do. Um, so when I was about 12 years old, I actually, my mom moved us to Tallahassee and I played a lot of baseball. I didn't quit baseball until I was 18. Um, but yeah, I dropped out of school, kind of had a, you know, kind of was very depressed at that age and, and, um, you know, it, it, it just wasn't working out for me in school. And so I decided to leave school in eighth grade. And then, you know, I'm, my grandmother moved on to Holloman golf course and I, I just literally started playing golf and Jan Auger, I was outside swinging a stick outside my apartment complex and, you know, Jan Auger, you know. Uh, came up to me and said, hey, you know, you, you want to go to the range and hit some balls? And I did that. And, you know, I did that. I kept coming back and I kept coming back. And she said, hey, you know, I'll charge you a dollar a day to play golf. And, and you know, that that was a life changer for me. And, and it really got me to going in the right direction. Was golf a sport in the neighborhood you were you were in, maybe in Madison, Florida? And then when you moved to Tallahassee, was that a sport that other kids that you were, you, you were friends with, were they playing that? Or were they doing something else? No, I mean, golf, I mean, and where I come from, we couldn't, we weren't even allowed on the golf course at that, at that, at that time of my life. Like we couldn't go to the country club. That just wasn't a thing that, that we wasn't allowed there. Um, so I didn't really see golf going on in my household or anything like that. When I didn't know anybody who played golf at that time. Um, and, you know, of course you hear Tiger Woods, but like, you know, from the time I was born to the time I was like 12, 13, I've never heard of Tiger Woods. Like really not like that because, you know, there's no one really in my town even talking about golf. So how come you chose golf then uh, over baseball? When I started playing golf, I just literally fell in love with it, man. And, and baseball was getting very, very like political and, you know, kids were making a team that, you know, parents could afford for them to make the team. And it was just like, I wanted to control my own destiny. And, you know, I, once I started playing golf, I just fell in love with golf and fell out of love with baseball. And I still played baseball until I was 18, but you know, my heart just wasn't in it for sure. It was just more mm -hmm. of golf. I wanted to get better at golf. 
And then at Hilleman Golf Course, as you said, you're playing for a dollar a round. Who was helping you there develop you as a golfer and maybe teaching you a few things as well? Yeah, so Chris Hanna, who once played at Florida State, um, he helped me out quite a bit for sure at, at that time. And then um, I had, a, you know, Mike Rice, who's now the Florida a and men's golf team coach. He was there in my life. I just had a – I was around a bunch of golfers. Like they used to gamble at the course, like – you know, John Lee Brown, this old guy who's no longer with us. Um, he actually just died recently. He was just, I mean, he was, he shot 59 at the course. This is a black guy. I mean, he was mm -hmm. a legend. I mean, he was so good. Everybody wanted to beat him, you know, and that really, I, you know, I was, I, I can remember times I would, used to go out there just because I wanted some competition. I couldn't afford to play in tournaments. I just wanted to, you know, gamble a little bit just to, you know, just to play for something. And I used to have $40, $50 bets when I was like 17, 18 years old. And, you know, <laughs> with only like 10 bucks in my pocket. So, you know, that really, I was just around those type of things that really motivated me to get better at golf. Mm. I also read, uh, you said in, uh, recently uh, to a journalist, you said that golf gave you a reason to live. It gave you a purpose. Yeah. Do you want to explain, yeah. do you want to expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, I was very, I was very depressed kid at that time. Um, I, I didn't really want to live. Honestly, it was nothing for like, I had no purpose in life, man. Seriously. Uh, it was, it was rough at home with my mom and I just, you know, felt like, you know, life wasn't going right for me at that time of my age. And then when I first started playing golf, it just lighted fire in me, man. It literally like, I don't, I don't even, I can't even explain it to you how, like how it happened and how like, you know, everything happens for a reason. Like, you know, Jan could have said, you know, he, she could have said like, why are you here? Or you need to leave the property, you're trespassing or anything like that. But instead she said, Hey, you know, come to the range and hit some balls. And, and, and that just showed me that like, looking back on everything, it just showed me that like, you know, I'm supposed to be here. Like I'm supposed to play golf. This is, this is it right here. This is my purpose. This is everything I can live for. I can change the game of golf. I can, I can, you know, I just want to see golf look like America and that's what I can do. And, and it's just amazing what this sport has done for me. It's just, it's absolutely incredible. Mm. And now you're, as I said at the top, you're one of the best players on the, uh, the advocates golf tour. Can you just explain yeah. uh, to people watching and listening? What is the tour? Because a lot would have never heard it before. Yeah, the tour, I mean, the APJ, um, Ken Bentley, the CEO, I mean, he just wants to see, more minority golfers and more African American golfers out on the out on the PJ Tour, and not only in the not only on the PJ Tour, but in the golf industry as well. So, I mean, he created this tour back in 2010 with him and Adrian Steele, who's a former tour player. Um, they came together and said, you know, we got to do something about this, and 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 they created three tournaments, and and now we have 13 events. I mean, we're playing Valhalla, we're playing championship style golf course at the PJ Tour players. I mean, that's just amazing. You just don't see that. You, we're playing five PGA Tour golf courses, and you just don't see stuff like that. You 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 don't see people fighting, you know, that hardly for something. And he really wants. I mean, he really wants to get us out there. He texted me the other day. I mean, the other morning, he said, "You know, my goal is to get you on the PGA Tour, and not only get you on the PGA Tour, is have you a winner on the PGA Tour." And I, and I can honestly say, you know, that he's doing everything he can to to do that. Mm. Uh, everyone, when I say. Kamaya is a top player. He won the tour championship. So he is the yeah. top player. <laughs> I should say everyone. Yeah. He is the top player. Right. Yeah. He's 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 the number he's the number one. That's that's how good he is. Um and as I said, you were meant to play farmers this week. You know, the, the positive yeah. test came in. Just try and describe to us the emotions maybe you went through when you found out that you just couldn't play at Tory Pines. Oh man. I mean, Chris would tell you, dude, I, I literally just I mean, I cried for probably two hours on and off, just, you know, screaming into my pillow. It was just, it was devastating. I felt like, you know, my whole world came down crashing on me. And then what happened to my mom, I got like an hour after I figured I had to withdraw was just, you know, and then, so it was just, it was just, you know, it was, it was, it was crazy. I mean, it hasn't, you know, it's gotten better and everything but you know now i just you know my grandma my mom just said they had to do a procedure on my grandmother now and then she has covid you know so it's just it's you know this it's just a never-ending you know thing you know and we're trying to get through it as a family and you know hopefully we get through it for sure yeah 100 percent, kamaya i should say to everyone that you know kamaya's basically his mom got taken into the hospital with covid um 
But apparently yeah. Kamaya, she's coming out of the hospital very soon. So things are improving. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Things are going, you know, improving. The doctor says she's trending in the right direction. So, um, you know, every, you know, everything's, you know, looking, looking pretty good for my mom. And, and, and that's just, you know, a, a blessing for sure. Mm, that's really good to hear. And you know what, despite not playing the farmers, you got some really great news. Uh, just the few days just gone by that you've now got an invite to both uh, Pebble and the Honda Classic, two great courses. I mean, you must be just overjoyed at that news. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I couldn't, you know, Ken and Steve called me and they, you know, presented me the news to the Honda. Uh, Ken called me about the Honda and Steve called me about Pebble. And it was just life changing. I mean, like I said, the farmers, planting the farmers was life changing. I mean, it's just, you know, it, it gets you so much exposure. I mean, no matter what happens, you know, you know, those weeks, it's just like to to be able to learn from the situations that I'm going to be in out there. It's just incredible. I mean, it's life changing. It's 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 you know, I see it like winning the lottery. It just doesn't happen for a lot of people. And and it's just amazing the opportunities that I'm getting. And also the Corn Ferry event that I'm planning in April, you know, I got an exemption into that. So it's just you know, it's just been a blessing. I just, it's, it's been, it's been amazing. Can't, I mean, I can't describe how I'm feeling right now with everything going on and, and you know, just being, you know, I got a call from club, the, uh, the CEO of club corp and, you know, they're starting a, a, uh, they start, they own golf courses and stuff like they manage golf courses and they're starting, uh, things in their communities where two, uh, two African-American kids are now can be members at their country clubs. And, you know, they want me to be an ambassador of that. It's just stuff like that has, that has happened. It's just absolutely incredible. I couldn't describe how everything is, how fast everything's moving, how, 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 you know, how much my life has changed in the past week. It's been amazing. Um, the support I've gotten from the PGA tour, um, the announcers, you know, everything, everything, you know, people have been in my inbox and, and, and <laughs> just showing the support and love the people that my story inspired. It's just absolutely incredible. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine, you know, this turning out this way. And it's just been a blessing to, to see all the love and support. Mm, you, a big inspiration, Kamayo. And, and last, as I said at the start, last year we spoke to uh, Damon Hack, Henny Koyak, uh, Black History Month here, and they were telling us various things. You said recently that when you got your invite into the farmers, you said that it was a real sign that change needed to be made. Can you try and just mm. develop on that a little bit, um, you know, about your experiences and what you mean by that as well? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I was so... I was kicked off a golf course last year um, that I had been going in, in into since I was 16 years old. I used to be sponsored by one of the members there. Um, you know, he told me I can come out there every day on his on his on his uh, membership. And and when I got older and older and, and, and last year I was 20, 20, uh, 26 years old. And, you know, to be told that, you know, a board meeting was held about me that, you know, I didn't they, they didn't want me out here anymore because I wasn't spending any money. It's just stuff like that. I'm a. You know, and and to see what a year can do, and that that the golf industry is literally starting to open up and 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 try to make golf more inclusive and for all and and diversity, and it's it's just awesome because we need we need the game to grow. Um, I I, I want to see golf look more like America, and that's just you know that's just amazing thing. You know, my opportunities and the APGA opportunities and just stuff that. You know the the hundred million dollar that the PGA you know committed to and and the and the PGA of America and, and just everything that's going on in the golf industry right now is absolutely amazing to see. I'm glad it, it's happening in my lifetime. It's you know it's it's because you know I became close to Jim Thorpe and and he played golf where you couldn't even he didn't he he played sometimes where he didn't have a check you know he he couldn't receive his check from the clubhouse. You know, and just see the golf industry doors open up. It's just, you know, it's a, it's incredible to see. Mm, it's quite, I mean, it's shocking to me. I don't know what other viewers think when, you know, we're in 2021 and you're asked to leave the golf club, basically. It's just, yeah. you know, that's an insane thing to, to even comprehend. Yeah. But it shows it's still yeah. happening around the world. It's really crazy. I mean, right. and I, as I said, farmers um, who sponsor you, they're looking, you know, to do a lot of initiatives. What would you like to see done? to get more minority golfers into golf and more feel more inclusive in the game as well. Yeah. I mean, just, 
I, we I, obviously there's going to need to be programs created, but not only programs created, but programs that are invested in that people keep their eyes and their hands on. Because you know what Jan did for me, she kept her hands on me. Like she not only charged me a dollar a day, but she made sure that I was taken care of, and she made sure she showed me tough love. And that's what you know. That's what really our relationship really hit another level when she started showing me tough love. And when and when and that's when I started to change as a person and say, hey, man, I got some I got an opportunity to make a dream become a lot of, of uh, reality. And and Jan showed me that. And so I think that not only that we need to create programs, but we need to our our counselors need to be invested in these programs and, and what Club Corp is doing, you know, giving kids memberships and stuff like that. That's just amazing. I mean, just, that needs to happen. And I think, you know, it's golf is moving in the right direction for sure. And um, that's and that's just what's. What should happen? You know, just keep the hands on the programs and on the kids, and that can mm, that mean, can change the golfing industry for sure. Let's hope so. I mean, you used to have the likes of like, uh, I mean, you, you mentioned Jim Thorpe there, Calvin Pete yeah. as well. Um, yeah, you know, th those are the guys that kids looked up to. The, the pool mm. of minority golfers, professional golfers, seems to be shrinking every year. I think there was four African Americans on tour last year, which seems. It seems, I, I, I don't know, I just, it doesn't work in my mind at all. Why do you think Absolutely. that's the case at the moment? Just because, I mean, the, uh, at the moment, it's, I mean, let me just say, like, when I was playing youth golf, like, I mean, I couldn't play much tournaments. I mean, you to, in order to be on the PGA Tour, you I mean, you have to be able to have access to a, a country club not just like a muni country club but a, a, at some point you're going to need access to a really nice country club to develop your game and get better and that's you and you know we don't have that we can't afford that you know we can't afford to to pay memberships and then play in ajga events i mean that's just i mean to play a, a ajga you know um tour season i mean it's like 12 grand 13 14 grand i mean we we literally can't afford it um, and, 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 you know, I see it with, you know, the kids back in my community. I mean, they want to play events, but they just literally can't afford it. And that's just, and, and if you don't get competition when you're younger, I mean, you're just not going to know how to, to deal with the, the, the big time PGA tournaments, AJGA events, you're just not going to know how to deal with it. And, you, and it's just going to become, a, uh, it's just going to fail, you know? And I think a lot of people who just watch golf, maybe on TV or, or read about it, they don't realize how much time and money just goes into getting to like Q school, something like that. Oh, yeah. That is incredibly expensive. And if you know, if you don't have the money in the first place, you've got no chance at all of getting there. Have you? Yeah. I mean, when I first turned pro three years ago, you know, my friends used to say, come on, like, you, you have the game. Like, yeah, like go to Q school. I'm like, dude, how, how am I going to go to Q school? I can't, you know, you know, I can't, I don't have six grand just for Q school and, you know, another four or five to travel. I mean, I just don't have that. So it was just impossible to get my talents showcased out there that people could see. And that's what the APGA tour, tour does. It, it makes us, you know, it puts our talents on a, a, in a place where people can see it. And then that just shows you what happens when, you know, people see that, you know, we can, we can do the, we can play this game as well. Hmm. I remember Harold Darnold third last year when they interviewed him, he said access is the biggest thing that's Ac stopping kids from all backgrounds getting involved in golf. I, I, you know, I don't know what it's like mm -hmm. in America, but in the UK, I, I've spoken about this a lot before. I think kids, you know, for whatever reason, don't like golf and can't get into it, maybe because they feel, you know, it, it's hard to get into and feel unwanted as well, which I think is the last thing we want kids to feel trying to get into the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Mm, yeah. Um, uh, anyway, you're practicing at Lake Nona, I think, as well now, aren't you? That's your club. No, I, I'm not a member there. My my uh, best friend, who I live with, Keith Green, he's a member out right there. So, I mean, I go out there uh, a lot with him um, lately, for sure. Just getting ready for you know tournament stuff like that. So, I live in Lake Nona. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not a member out there. Okay, still a great place to practice, though. Lake Nona. Oh it's man, not, it's amazing! It's not bad. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> incredible. Absolutely incredible places. I mean, when I left, it was such in good shape. And my best friend called me yesterday. He's like, "Dude, this place is absolutely pure right now because you know they have the LPJ event go, uh, getting mm -hmm. ready to go out there. So it's just, it's, but it's an amazing place, man. It's like heaven on earth for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's amazing. Uh, last. It is an amazing place. Uh, last thing, and this is something you said uh, recently as well, which I thought was, uh, you know, it sums up golf, really. You said 
Golf might be the most difficult sport to succeed in because of the fine line between good and great. Do you want to, mm. do you want to expand on that as well? Because I think that, that a lot of golfers could, uh, could uh, attune to that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, like I said, it's, it's, you know, you, it, it, it's about opportunities, first of all, to be, to be great. I mean, and I think that, you know, you have to put the time in, I mean, you get what you get, you get what you put in, in this game and you can, you can fake it in some sports, but you literally cannot fake it in this go- in game, especially on the PJ tour and at the high level, the guys are so good. And you, you, it's, it's literally, I mean, you, you know how you, sometimes you have these players that are really good as amateurs, like really good, really good amateur mm-hmm. careers. But when they get to the PJ Tour, they just don't pan out. And it's not that it wasn't, wasn't good enough, but it takes so much dedication to be good at this game and so many repetitions to be so good. And, you know, you know, it's sometimes, you know, you just some people don't have the, the, the hard work or I mean, it, they have the ability, but it's just it's a grind for sure. Mm. Well, look, come on. I just going to wish you all the luck for Pebble Beach and Honda. Not that you need it, because I think you're going to do great there. I mean, we have Willie Mack, who who took your place, who I know you're good friends with. He played the Farmers, yeah. and you know he played. He didn't make mm-hmm. the cut, but I saw him a lot on the coverage, and he played really, really well. Hey, but Kamai, you're yeah. better than him. So, uh, Thank so you, you sir. Should, so, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate uh, so you're gonna you're gonna have a good showing there, at Pebble, and around the Bear Trap at the Honda as well two great courses i just want to say thanks so much for coming on telling your story and just appreciate the time out as well hey thanks for having me i really appreciate the support and the love that i'm getting for everybody and it absolutely means a lot and and thanks for having me today on sky sports